Welcome to our Thought Place and Praise. Ginger here. I'm going to make an illustrated map today and I'm focusing on Vancouver, Canada. Maybe it's because of the lockdown or the forced restrictions on travel, but I just felt compelled to reminisce the times my family explored different places. Uh, so whether it's to document a past travel or to highlight your future travel wish list, an illustrated map is one way to do it, and I'm going to show you how to make one. There's no single route to create an illustrated map. Different people have different thoughts on how to build a map, but I'll show you guys my own process and I hope it sheds light and enough inspiration for you to start plotting your own. Now the first step is to decide which place you want to map. Like, um, me, I visited many tourist destinations, but the easiest one for me to illustrate is Vancouver since it's my home. Creating a map for the west coast of Canada just dredges up happy memories of time spent together with my family, uh, of the times we strolled around town or the picnic we had by the bay. Now, you may choose a place you already know or pick one that you feel nostalgic about or Maybe it's a country you're excited to explore soon, like uh, a place in your travel bucket list. Wherever it is, make sure it's a place that has enough landmarks and icons you can use to populate your map because, of course, you don't want your map to look so blank and empty and boring. Now, draw up a list of those landmarks then consult a real online map to locate these places. My goal is not accuracy in terms of distances and scale. Uh, an illustrated map is its not like a Google map or a GPS that has all the street names to guide you around town. Well, sure, you can put major highways in your illustration, but it's enough to know if the landmark is on the north, on the south, east, or west. So you can at least orient them on the correct compass side, whether it's on the top or the bottom, left or right side of your paper or canvas. It's for this reason that I drew my map while in front of my computer. And I had a lot of aha moments while doing this because I didn't really know until I saw it in Google that uh, Lionsgate Bridge, for example, is on the northwest of Canada Place or or that Granville Island is somewhere in the south. So yeah, we need to consult a real map for location referencing. Uh, by the way, besides landmarks, you can also, um, you may want to add specific food specialties or activities that the country is known for. In the case of Vancouver, as you can see in my drawings, I, I added animals like the beaver, raccoon and heron because Canada is rich in wildlife. I added here a whale because British Columbia is known for whale watching. I also added autumn colored trees and pine trees because the west coast is rich in forest cover and green belts. Uh, some people enjoy food maps so uh, you can perhaps add those too. Uh, maybe for maps of Asia, you'd like to draw sushi with chopsticks or maybe ramen noodles or bubble tea or laksa or samosas. For Canada, you might want to draw maple syrup or maybe poutine or Tim Hortons donuts. It's up to you. Okay, um, most map illustrators include major road systems in, the, in their art. Uh, while others, like me, I just have a montage of pictures. I uh, personally, I decided against adding streets purely because of space constraints. There are just tons of places worthy of, a, of space in a Vancouver map. So I had to remove streets to leave space for more iconic buildings. Besides, my goal here is not location accuracy and navigation. This is purely for art appreciation. Okay, um, after picking your landmarks, choose an art medium. In this video, you'll see me work with acrylic on canvas and 
I picked it because I want to hang the finished map on a wall without framing. You can choose inks or maybe gouache or watercolor and paper. Or maybe you are more comfortable with digital compositions using Procreate, uh, Adobe Photoshop or Illustrator perhaps. Again, it's up to you. Uh, digital map making may include the scanning of actual handmade illustrations, then layering them in a software like Photoshop. It's actually a more flexible medium because you can undo your mistakes. You can change your colors and saturation or blend more easily or move your icons and landmarks if you want to reorient your layout. Digital illustration is a completely different tutorial, which I won't delve into here. But my point is, go with a medium you're comfortable with, one that you'll have fun using. Because ultimately, map illustrating should be fun. Uh, choose your color palette. Uh, do, do you want to stick to four, four colors, three colors, five colors? Or, or do you want a purely grayscale map and play with black and white shading? Or do you want to go all out like what I, I'm going to do here and just run the full color spectrum? So pick wisely and go with your gut feeling on what colors appeal to you. Now this project I have here is an exercise on mark making. I, I want to show you that leaving marks creates art. Um, my blue water background will be purely grunge and mark making using a sea sponge and by scrubbing with a palette knife. I, I want to show you um, that we can create a contrast between a smooth background, which you'll, you'll find in this green land, and a busy background, which will be represented by the blue bodies of water. It makes the map more interesting if you add different textures into it. Uh, so my point is, don't worry if you accidentally left paint smudges on your map. Uh, you might notice later, I have plenty of that in this canvas and I left those happy accidents there. Um, also, when I create the pink labels and all the white labels for Stanley Park, Burrard Inlet, and English Bay, I adjusted the opacity of my paint so that the smears underneath can still be seen. I, I went easy on the paint because uh, I wanted the smudges to create textures on my labels. I don't want my labels to just look flat pink or solid white because it's Honestly, it's prettier if it looks mottled and speckled. Uh, now, talking about labels, don't worry about your handwriting. I, I know some people, uh, often they criticize their own penmanship and say it looks horrible. Actually, hand lettering is an art form. Whether they are straight or crooked, uppercase or lowercase, squiggly and chicken scratchy, they are all fonts. There are hundreds of fonts online, actually, that were made out of people's handwriting. So why not make your own handwriting a special font, too? You can elevate the personal value of your map if you know that a part of your character and personality is embedded in it. Friends, ultimately, map illustrations don't just celebrate a place. They celebrate the memories you have of that place and highlight the dreams and wishes of exploring that special city or country or continent. So go ahead and make this a project. I hope this video has kick-started you in that direction.
So there you have it. Thanks for watching and for faithfully sticking with me in this channel. I'm grateful for your loyalty and friendship. This again is Ginger from Art That Place and Praise. God bless you and have fun creating.